In the first part of statistical process control video, we talked about basic concepts of statistics. In this video, we will study some advanced statistics. Let's begin. Methods of association. The methods of association refer to a wide variety of coefficients, the statistical strength of the relationship on the variables of interest. These methods of strength or association can be described in several ways, depending on the analysis. Some of the commonly used measures are covariance. Covariance is a measure of the joint variability of two random variables. It shows how the variable y reacts to the variation of the variable x. Correlation coefficient. A number between plus 1 and minus 1 calculated so as to represent the linear interdependence of two variables or sets of data. The coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination denoted by r square is a key output of regression analysis. It is interpreted as proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from the independent variable. Frequency of distribution A frequency distribution graphically summarizes and displays in the distribution of a process dataset. The frequency distribution's centrality shows the degree to which the data center on a specific value and the amount of variation in range or variance from the center. Frequency distributions are usually displayed in a histogram. In simple terms, frequency distribution is a mathematical function showing the number of instances in which a variable takes each of its possible values. Cumulative frequency distribution Technically, a cumulative frequency distribution is the sum of the class and all classes below it in a frequency distribution. It is created from a frequency distribution by adding an additional column to the table called cumulative frequency. Thus, for each value, the cumulative frequency for that value is the frequency up to and including the frequency for that value. It shows the number of data at or below a particular variable. The central limit theorem states that for sufficiently large sample sizes, regardless of the shape of the population distribution, if samples of size n are randomly drawn from a population that has a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, the samples means x are approximately normally distributed. If the populations are normally distributed, the samples means are normally distributed regardless of the sample sizes. The theorem is applicable for controlled or predictable processes. When means are used as estimators to make inferences about a population's parameters and n is greater than or equal to 30, the estimator will be approximately normally distributed in repeated sampling. The mean and standard deviation of that sampling distribution are given as mu x equals to mu and sigma x equals to sigma divided by under root n. Using plus minus 3 sigma control limits, the central limit theorem is the basis of the prediction as if the process has not changed, a sample mean falls outside the control limits an average of only 0.27% of the time, as clearly indicated in the image on the slide. The theorem therefore enables the use of smaller sample averages to evaluate any process because Distributions of sample means tend to form a normal distribution. Let's now discuss some of the basic terms and terminologies used in probability. Probability is the chance that something will occur. It is expressed as a decibel fraction or a percentage. Sample space is the set of possible outcomes of an experiment or the set of conditions. An event is a subset of a sample space. It is denoted by a capital letter such as A, B, C, etc. Events have outcomes, which are denoted by lowercase letters. Independent events, which are independent of each other, that is, each event is not affected by any other event. Dependent events are the events which are affected by previous events. A simple event is an event that cannot be decomposed. The set of all sample points for an experiment is called the sample space. 
compound events are formed by a composition of two or more events the union of two events is that event consisting of all outcomes contained in either of the two events intersection of events is that event consisting of all outcomes that the two events have in common the complement of an event is the set of outcomes in the sample space that are not in the event itself mutually exclusive events have no outcomes in common like the intersection of an event and its complement contain no outcomes or it is an empty set when a sample space consists of n possible outcomes all equally likely to occur then the probability of each outcome is 1 by n like the sample space of all the possible outcomes this is equally likely out probabilities for independent events or multiplication rule independent events occurrence does not depend on other events of sample space then the probability of two events a and b occurring both is p a intersection b given by probability of a multiplied by probability of b and similarly for many events probability for mutually exclusive events or addition rule mutually exclusive events do not occur at the same time or in the same sample space and do not have any outcomes in common thus for two mutually exclusive events a and b the event a intersection b is equal to null and the probability of events a and b occurring is zero as p a intersection b is equal to zero conditional probability is a result of an event depending on the sample space or another event